Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. We're going to continue an extended Tech Talk series uh, with our friends from AlertOps. Uh, I have Cam from AlertOps joining me today. Cam, thanks for joining me. Yeah, hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Uh, it, it's so exciting. We've been able to start uh, looking at some of the features and functions of AlertOps. And one of the things we talked about looking at in this episode is AlertOps workflow function. Uh, and diving a little bit deeper under the covers into what what that means and, and, and how that how that works. So what I'd like to do is turn it over to you um, and have you share with us a little bit about workflows within Alert Ops. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one second here and I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, workflows with respect to Alert Ops are very, very cool. And the reason that uh, I find them so cool is because not only are they powerful, but they're really simple as well. So the ability to utilize such a simple construct to leverage and build uh, substantial levels of automation in your response processes uh, is definitely beneficial from an operational standpoint, but also from a standpoint of time to value. So using AlertOps workflows, we can very easily automate parts of the response process that would otherwise be manual with uh, just a couple of minutes and a couple of single clicks. So uh, I will jump in and walk you through what an actual workflow within AlertOps may look like here. So Great. top here, jumping into my workflows. So workflows within Alert Ops can do a couple of different things. The first is notify people, and the second is notify systems. So when I talk about notifying people, that can be via any channel of communication. And when I talk about notifying systems, I mean via API. So whether that's as simple as logging a note in an external ITSM ticketing pool, or alternatively, whether that is modifying a field value to kick off custom workflows that are built out in that source system as well. So in this case, what you see is an alert ops workflow to notify people. So I have a major incident workflow. So in the case of a major incident, this will go out to any store managers that are affected by the incident. So I have my workflow, I have my alert type. So within alert ops, you can set up different alert types to correspond to different types of scenarios. So in the case that you have a major incident, you might wanna capture certain fields, notify certain people, and build any of those attributes pertinent to the scenario into your alert type here. We have a few levels of, uh, of where the workflow can take action. So at the alert level, at the message level, or even at the individual delivery level. So where you can get fairly granular on how you would like to structure your conditions, the ability to enable or disable your workflow, and we have a recurrence interval. So in this case, this is a message to go out to my store managers, and this will recur on an interval of two minutes. So I have start conditions here. In this case, if the status type of my alert is not closed and it, it has been more than three, it has been three minutes from the time from the beginning of the alert, it will kick off this particular action. So utilizing this escalation rule, it'll send this information, this customized messaging to my store partners and you can drag and drop any custom or standard fields you have in the environment to modify your messaging here. You can select your recipient groups and users, as well as customize how you would like to notify the original recipients, or if you would want to kick off a new thread for this type of messaging. And then we have fairly straightforward stop conditions as well. So this will recur on a two minute interval, as long as it's not closed after three minutes from the start. And then once the alert is in fact closed, this will stop this workflow from occurring. So this is an example of how we can notify individuals outside of the escalation path. So you might have a standard escalation process where it goes from your primary to your secondary to your manager, but then outside of that standard escalation, there might be other parties, in this case store managers, that need visibility into not only what's going on, but also the actions being taken to resolve it. Outside of the ability to notify people, as I'd mentioned, we have the ability to notify systems. So in this case, I have a workflow to uh, connect and integrate with a particular PSA tool and log all of the notification deliveries within the notes of that tool. And last time we saw that I was using a message thread type. In this case, we're uh, verifying at the actual delivery level how this workflow's conditions will be structured. 
before I had match all conditions, which acts as an and condition. In this case, I have match any, which is more like an or condition. So if the delivery status is either acknowledged, sent, failed, or delivered, it will automatically kick off this action to post a note with respect to who was notified at what time via what delivery status within the notes of that ticket. So this uh, kind of covers AlertOps workflows from a pretty high level as far as our ability to notify people and systems. But the cool thing, one of the cool things about AlertOps workflows, is they can be changed together. If you are uh, kicking off a workflow that will interact with another tool and then update a value within AlertOps, you can chain a subsequent workflow to go out and kick off another process based on the value that's been returned. So by chaining workflows together, not only do you get more holistic response capabilities, but you also get a substantial level of tool, cha tool chain automation there. That's really cool, Cam. Um, you, know, you start to think about trying to automate uh, uh, you know, some of these communications. And, and this is really what we're talking about being able to do here, make these, make these things trigger, uh, have other triggers. I mean, as you said, you can start to chain things together. Uh, you know, I could see myself uh, designing something super overly complex and go, kind of going down quite the rabbit hole. Um, but that's the power of the AlertOps platform and what we're able to do and the value it's able to bring um, to help with these communications. Uh, so excited to share these features uh, with our audience out there and um, looking forward to diving deeper with you into some of the other great features and functions within AlertOps. Cam, thanks for joining me today. Absolutely, thank you, Mike.